you guys moved back to the facility, I, I take it. And I'm just curious how that went and what kind of adjustments anybody really like to set up behind the stadium? Yeah, so everything's been pretty smooth so far. So what we've done as far as ensuring the, uh, the spacing out and everything, Dan, is we're actually using the inside of Quest where we've always had all our meeting rooms. We've also transformed half of our indoor facility into meeting areas as well. So the defense will do pretty much everything they have meeting-wise outside. The offense is a team room out there, and then the offense will use some meeting rooms inside as well. So there's a little bit of back and forth for some of these guys, but it's been a smooth transition so far. And I know we're going to be on practice in a few minutes, but just in case guys aren't out there, uh, I wanted to just check with you. Like all the guys you claimed yesterday, and then like Logan Ryan and, and the, the corner from Denver you traded for, like who's going to be out there and, and who's still kind of in the process of getting on board? You know, we had a couple guys we claimed, the three guys we claimed, they're actually quarantining today and then they have to get their physicals later on. So there's some of the guys that are in transition. They're going to be doing some physicals or quarantining. We should have everybody out there Wednesday with us today. Today we're still kind of, you know, a couple guys to add still. But you'll see Logan should be out there, Isaac should be out there all today, see some of those new guys. And, and then just the last thing on that, like what about the guys you cut on Saturday and then brought back? I think it's Williams and Tomlinson. Are they right back out there today or do they have to take a step back or anything? No, they've been good with us. They stay within the testing protocol, so I kept everything on track. Gotcha. Thanks. Thanks. No problem. Hi, Leonard. Hey, Joe, as you prepare for this game, how much do you intend to coach the man? And I mean, like Mike Tomlin across, you know, the sideline across from you. You, you have your own game plan and what the Steelers like to do, but then how much do you coach, you know, the coach across from you and what his tendencies are and how much you know about him and how you, how you scout him? Yeah, I mean, every coach has a different tendencies and philosophy within the game. It's our job to know our opponents. It's our job to make sure that a game plan fits, you know, what they do well and try to give our players an edge. So in terms of knowing how different coaches call the game and how they build their team through training camp and how they operate throughout the flows of the season, that's all of our jobs to make sure we operate to give our players the best chance with their path. Thanks. Paul Schwartz. Hey, Joe. Hey, Paul. Hey, um, when you look at this uh, opener, uh, because it's so unusual with no preseason and everything like that, do you think it is – Is what do you look at as far as how you're going to deploy your – players can you expect any player to play 80 90 snaps 90 you know 95 percent of the snaps um as maybe in a normal game you would you look at this and say you know it's almost like we got to give everybody minutes here well i think it's a combination of number one we want to use all our players actively in every game anyway and then also along with that ball just because of the limits on the numbers you can have at games anyway we're expecting players have to play the full length so we'll spell guys as far as we can but we're going to have to make sure that we have the best guys on the field at all times to execute the plan in place. Obviously, for everybody in the league, this will be a challenge. No one's been able to, time-wise, to this point, put their team through any kind of situation that replicates the entire length of the game, whether that's the three hours of competition, the hour plus leading up to it. We just haven't been allowed that amount of time out of the league, and that's just the way it is. So everyone's dealing with the same challenges right now. You know, we've placed a big emphasis on conditioning within our program, trying to get our players acclimated and healthy. So that's something we've got to push on going forward. So if, uh, for instance, you have 75 snaps on offense, the offensive linemen are going to have to push through and play 75 snaps on offense if need be? Yeah, someone's got to be out there, Paul. So, again, if we can spell someone for a play here or there, we can rotate it through, great. That'll be part of the plan as we get through the later part of the week. As of right now, everyone's preparing to play every snap. Thank you. Tom Rock. Joe, you know, in sort of looking around the league, um, Usually at this time of year, we, we see some football that's not quite as sharp as, as we see after two or three weeks of games. Do you expect that this year in particular will be pretty sloppy to start out with? And, and uh, uh, you know, especially given, you know, the no preseason games and all the things that you guys have had to deal with? I think when you watch NFL football in September, regardless of the year, Tom, you see a degree of bad football out there in the field. Turnovers, penalties, some mental errors. You see some things within the flow and the operation of the game. That isn't the way it looks later in the season. That's just the truth in the National Football League every year. Obviously, we're coaching to eliminate bad football, and that's you know my goal as a head coach. Uh, I don't know if this year would be any different. I can't turn around and say it's going to be better or worse, uh, but I think September you always see your share of you know bad football as it turns up on tape. And then if I could ask you just to turn around to, to your team in, in particular, uh, do you know what you're going to do with uh, captains yet? You know what? Uh, we'll announce them later on. We voted this morning as a team. Before I announce it publicly, I'll tell the players first. But, yes, we have our captains. What do you look for in a captain? What do you, what do you want to see from your captains? Well, I think it's important to me 
from the head coach that it's someone who's a voice of the team that can communicate for everyone in the locker room. You know, I stress with the players, you know, leadership is about doing your job well. It's about putting the team first. And it's about, you know, being unselfish. So, you know, you've got to be able to bring people with you to actually be a leader. You know, otherwise you're just up there giving speeches and kind of rah rah. So we just preach to the players that make sure you take your time and, you know, decide who you want to represent you. It's not a popularity contest. You're picking people representing you, you know, when we meet on a weekly basis with the captains. Thank you. We got, we got time for one more, Art. Hey, Joe, how you doing? Good, Art. What's going on? Um, when we asked you a couple of weeks ago about your competition at center, you said it was, I think, scratch even. Uh, I don't necessarily expect you to tell us who your starting center is going to be on Monday night yet, but have you made a decision with the way that competition has played out between Nick Gates and Spencer Pulley? Uh, you know, there's been the pushback either way. Both guys competed hard, made some gains throughout training camp. We're going to go through another day or so, and I'm going to talk to the players before we go ahead and decide anything internally. But do you, in, in your mind, do you have who you, you want to be at, at center to start up on Monday night, or are you still determining? We're still going to work on the side that are. You know, we're going to let another day go through right here with some things we're going to work on tonight.